Hello guys and welcome to a new bespoke synth tutorial. Today I want to show you how to make chords and arpeggios in bespoke synth. So the first module I want to show you is the chorder and it's a super easy to use. You simply need to select the chord you want to make like minor, major, you have a bunch of choices here. You give it an input, an input note and we can do so using keyboard display. And if you want to visualize the actual chord, you can use chord displayer. It will show the chord name. So in this example, if I press C, I'm going to generate C minor. If you take a closer look, we can also visualize that uh, inside the chord display, we have a Roman number in parentheses that indicates that we are making a chord that is based on the first degree of our scale. In my example, I'm using a C minor scale. So the C minor chord, it's that chord made on the first degree of C minor. If you want to visualize each individual note, you can use note displayer. You can take the quarter output, you send it to note displayer. And now we can visualize then the chord of C minor, it's made of C. D sharp, it's not correct, it should be uh, E flat and C and G, sorry. So we can send this chord out of quarter to two no modules, which are FM, synth and the other one is car plus strong signal generator. It's a monophonic uh, signal generator, so it cannot receive multiple notes. So we're going to get rid of it. We take the quarter output, we send it to FM synth, and now we can listen to a few chords. And we can do the same, the same thing using car plus strong. These two modules can handle multiple notes. So you can make chords out of these two modules. Let's take a listen of car plus strong. Now talking about multiple notes, we can we can play them simultaneously. So we make a chord or we can create arpeggios. So we play each individual note once at the time. We can do so using the arpeggiator and we can send it uh, the chord. We can use a signal generator since the output will be one note at the time. With arpeggiator, you can select the rate at which you want to play each individual note. You can select different methods, different ways to read through these notes. If the slider on step here is set in its zero position, it will play them back and forth, so right, left, and vice versa. You can move forward, so step one. You can move backward, minus one. And of course, you can select into how many uh, octaves you want to spread the arpeggio. Now to make things more pleasant, we can apply an envelope instead of listening to the constant signal produced by signal generator. So we use an envelope. The arpeggiator sends its note to the envelope. The envelope goes here inside volume control. Then we take the arpeggiator output and we send it to the signal generator as well. We can make a more simple envelope, like an AD envelope, something like this. Mm -hmm. 
Now, using arpeggiator only, you can read through the chord notes in a pretty standard way. If you want to experiment using different reading methods, I suggest you to use note strummer, which seems to be a pretty uh, unuseful module. It turns out that it is pretty interesting to use. So we can get rid of arpeggiator. We can take the quarter output, send it to note quarter output, send it to note strummer envelope, and from note strummer to the signal generator. Now, each time I press a key, you'll visualize inside note strummer each individual note of the chord. And by moving that slider, you can strum this instrument. So instead of uh, using this keyboard, I'm going to use a note sequencer so I can free my mouse. Instead of controlling this slider manually, you can right click and apply an LFO. And here things start to become interesting. So you can use a saw wave. So you can generate a ramp that goes from zero to one. And here you have an arpeggiator. But now you have more control over uh, the playback of these notes. So you can select a uh, high value, low value, so you can uh, decide not to play specific notes, like the first one, the last one. You can apply bias so that it will generate a different playback curve. This is, this is really interesting. You can apply shuffle. And, and you can smooth out that curve. But things are not done yet, because if we change the LFO oscillator, we can select pretty interesting curves like the purling noise. And here you can experiment using pretty unusual arpeggios. So that was all for today's tutorial. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if so, I invite you to leave a like and subscribe to support my channel. If you want, drop a line in the comment section down below and tell us how you make chords or arpeggios in bespoke. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.